Have you ever wondered what intricate and layered weapon configurations lie concealed beneath those seemingly identical square hatches when you see the neatly arranged vertical launch units on a destroyer's deck? Recently, an official display provided a textbook answer to this question. The 9-meter class launch tubes for the YJ-1 Ada anti-ship missile and the 7-meter class launch tubes for the HQ-9B air defense missile made a historic joint appearance. This was far from a simple equipment display. It offered an intuitive decoding of the modular, serialized design philosophy behind the Chinese Navy's Haitong-1 shipborne universal vertical launch system, serving as a technical testament to its formidable combat capabilities. To fully grasp this image, one must trace the technological lineage of China's naval vertical launch systems. The development of the Chinese Navy's universal VLS has followed a clear, incremental innovation path. The early introduction of the Russian-made RIFM system provided initial experience with long-range area air defense and cold launch technology. Subsequently, the domestically developed H, a JK-03 system, deployed on Type 052C destroyers, inherited the cold launch principle and rotary drum structure, enabling the integration of the HQ-9 long-range air defense missile onto ships and addressing the fundamental need for fleet air defense. Another technical route materialized in the H, a JK-16 system deployed on Type 054 frigates, adopting a hot launch method and concentric tube missile launch design similar to the US MK-41 system. It successfully enabled co-launching of the HQ-16 medium-range air defense missile and the U-8 rocket-assisted torpedo. These dual explorations laid a solid foundation for subsequent higher-level integration. The true breakthrough began with the Haidong-1 system deployed on Type 052D destroyers. This was not a simple combination of the previous two approaches but a profound integration of systems and a technological leap forward. Its core technical features can be summarized in three points. First is the hot, cold dual-mode launch technology. This system pioneered globally the capability to support both cold launch and hot launch modes within a single launcher cluster. Cold launch relies on pressure from a gas generator to eject the missile from the tube, minimizing tube oblation and ensuring safer ignition after missile exit. Hot launch involves direct ignition of the missile engine within the tube, featuring simpler structure and faster response. The HTT-1 seamlessly integrates both modes through a precision gas ejection system and structural reinforcement, fundamentally liberating missile propulsion types from launch platform constraints. Second is its deep modular design. The system employs standard 850 mm diameter launch units with two standard depth specifications, 9 meters and 7 meters. The recently revealed side-by-side -side imagery directly illustrates this design. The 9-meter deep pits are specifically engineered for large munitions, accommodating not only the YJ-1 Ada but also the YJ-18 land attack cruise missile and potential future hypersonic weapons. The 7-meter pits primarily accommodate long-range air defense missiles like the HHQ-9B. In the Type 052D's 64-cell configuration, a front 32, Rear 32 layout is typically employed. Modules of both depths are flexibly mixed based on internal hull structure, achieving an optimal balance between space utilization and combat functionality. This design philosophy, combined with the fully universal 9-meter deep pits on the subsequent Type 055 destroyers, forms a tiered, flexible, and cost-effective naval firepower system. Third is the open, universal architecture. At its core, the Haitong-1 is a standardized weapon socket. Through unified electrical interfaces, data buses, air conditioning lines, and mechanical mounting fixtures, it provides a plug-and-play physical and informational environment for diverse munitions. Public specifications for its export variant, the HT-1E, indicate the system supports mixed loading and sequential simultaneous launch of multiple missile types, including air defense, anti-ship, anti-submarine, and land attack missiles. The significance of this architecture lies in minimizing the coupling between missiles and the ship platform. This drastically shortens the integration and testing cycle for new munitions, enabling rapid combat capability iteration and upgrades. It is precisely these core technologies that grant ships equipped with the Haitong-1 system disruptive combat effectiveness. Tactically, it achieves a rapid response closed loop of detect and strike. Its 360-degree omnidirectional launch capability eliminates the time required for traditional inclined launchers to adjust the ship's heading, allowing air defense missiles to launch at maximum speed to intercept during multidirectional saturation attacks. Simultaneously, 
anti-ship or land attack missiles no longer need to wait for launchers to rotate toward targets. Their launch cadence depends solely on the speed of fire control system calculations and target allocation, achieving complete autonomy in offensive and defensive rhythms. At the operational level, this capability establishes the destroyer as a multi-role core node, a single type 052D destroyer. Leveraging flexible ammunition configuration within its VLS can simultaneously fulfill multiple roles during a single deployment. It serves as the fleet's air defense command ship and regional shield. Using data links to guide HQ-9B missiles to intercept aircraft and cruise missiles hundreds of kilometers away, it serves as the primary force for frontline anti-ship strikes. With its YJ-1 Ada missiles boasting a range exceeding 500 kilometers and terminal supersonic penetration capabilities, posing a lethal threat to enemy carrier strike groups, it also functions as the stealthy arm for precision land strikes, equipped with land attack cruise missiles that grant its strategic level deep strike capabilities. All these mission transitions can be accomplished solely through the software interface of the combat command system, achieving a high degree of software-defined functionality for the platform. From a broader systems of systems perspective, the HTT-1 vertical launch system represents the critical material foundation for the Chinese Navy's transition from platform-centric warfare to network-centric and system-centric warfare. Its universal interfaces enable standardized combat capability modules across the Navy's main combat assets. Whether deployed on the Type 052D, Type 055, or future vessels like the Type 054B, any ship equipped with this system can seamlessly integrate into the joint combat network spanning sea, air, and space domains. Each missile launched is no longer an isolated weapon. Instead, it receives real-time target data via the network from satellites, early warning aircraft, drones, other vessels, and even shore-based sensors to conduct beyond visual range attacks or coordinated engagements. This model of deeply embedding platforms within the system achieves overall combat effectiveness far surpassing the simple sum of individual advanced platforms. Thus, when we revisit that image of short and long launch tubes side by side, we see more than just two missile types. It represents a milestone in the Chinese Navy's decades-long technological accumulation, signifying its world-leading status in integrated shipborne weapon systems. This achievement symbolizes that China's naval equipment development has transcended the stage of single technology catch-up, entering a trajectory of autonomous, dynamic innovation characterized by systemization, standardization, and modularization. Starting with the Haitong one, the combat capability of China's surface warships now follows a highly predictable and sustainable technological path. This provides a solid and flexible foundation for venturing into the deep blue seas and undertaking increasingly complex missions. Beneath the deck, the varying depths of these pits represent profound pathways, leading to the future naval battlefield.